Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. Today, I want to talk to you about this Princeton Reverb. This is an amp that I built uh, back in 2021, and I've got a build thread on TDPR, and I've got a bunch of videos on my channel. I'll leave links to those down in the description if you want to check them out. This amp came back to me because it was having some noise problems. Specifically, it seemed to me like related to the reverb, and um, kind of to my shame, it took me actually a long time to figure it out. Um, but what I want to do is talk to you through the process that I went through trying to fix this and figure out what's going on. If you're curious about what it might look like to try to troubleshoot an amp that's not working its best, I'm going to try to go through some of that in this video. And also, if you're looking for answers on how to fix a, a black panel type Fender amp that's having a noisy reverb, maybe some of these tips can help you. So let's go ahead and dive into those things now. This is the Princeton Reverb with the reverb off. It sounds nice. Reverb on. No hum. Hum. I turn the reverb all the way up. It gets worse. Reverb pot down. That's what we're trying to fix. Okay, I've been working on this Princeton reverb. And uh, this is what the reverb knob sounds like now. The amp is on, it's on about five volume, so it's pretty loud. It's, it's actually very uh, very quiet, low buzz. If I turn the reverb knob up, I mean, it adds a little bit of reverb noise there at the end, but I had a couple problems. First of all, this, this tank was in it before. It's a three spring tank meant to be pushed by tubes. It wasn't working. So I went to this other one Big three spring tank, this is how it sounds. Oh yeah. All right guys, this repair really stumped me. And I really farted around with this thing for a long time. Uh, it actually took way too long to fix just because I was spinning my tail for a long time. But part of it was because I ran into a lot of superfluous issues. I had a reverb tank that wasn't working. I had a tube that wasn't working. And so I had to sort all those things out. But I want to run through all of the changes that I made. Some of them were directly related and others maybe weren't. But first of all, in the amp previously, I had all my filter caps kind of tucked under here. And it really wasn't a great spot. So I actually took a pedal enclosure and I made a doghouse and drilled some holes for ventilation and put my filter caps. So my filter caps run along these wires into here and are stored in a doghouse on a little mini circuit board just like this uh, and and that just gets them out here this whole thing is grounded I've actually got a ground tab here so they're nice and shielded and uh, out of the way just so that they're not I have more room to operate second this was the output jack that I had used and I don't know something about this thing was just a little funky to me it's got a lot of tabs and a lot of weird connections and I didn't really understand all of what was going on. I think it's like a stereo jack of some kind, but it just has a lot of leads and I I, I didn't really like it. So what I honestly ended up doing was actually just hardwiring the speaker. And this is a little trick that I do. I mean, it's not ideal in situations where you want to potentially plug in, you know, this removes the ability to plug into an extension cabinet, which for some people is a big deal, but for others not as much. I like it just because right here is my wire that runs uh, that green wire right there. That's the the output transformer wire, and it simply connects here on a on terminal strip point. And I've got my negative feedback loop wire, and then this the speaker wire runs all the way out to the speaker. And honestly, um, you know, for the speaker, like the connection from the output transformer to the speaker is a really critical connection. And so I was having a little bit of trouble with that jack. I think it was causing some some weird noise or sometimes it wouldn't always seat properly or I don't know if it was catching strays from stray signals from all these tabs. So that was a stinky output jack. Um, I'm pleased with how that went. Uh, next, uh, I redid a lot of my grounds. So the way I was running the ground, it was like on the board and I ran jumpers and I, I wasn't real happy with that. So I went to this setup, which is an old school setup. You can see here I've got, right here, there's a bare wire. It runs all the way across here. And it's it terminates right here. 
on the input jack. The input jack is bolted with a star washer onto the chassis. So this, this is my preamp ground and all of the preamp ground connections run wires onto this wire. And then it, it, it also, I, I secure it here on the reverb ground tab, the reverb controls volume uh, ground. So that gives me a nice secure spot to secure all my preamp grounds. Then all my other output grounds are here on this lug on the power transformer. And then I've also got the star ground which is down underneath here, that uh, the the green wire from my power cord. So I cleaned up the grounds. Um, what else did I do? Okay, then back here I've got these four gold RCA plugs, and I just wasn't real happy with how that was working. They were acting funny, and... I don't know if the RCA jacks I was using just were kind of fiddly, but I thought they were inducing a lot of hum, especially through the reverb circuit. So, what I've done now, the tremolo and the reverb are always on. You can't shut them off. You shut them off by turning the controls to zero. The foot switch no longer operates. However, the upside is this reverb circuit is dead quiet, and you'll hear it in the clips. Also, the tremolo is nice and strong. It works great. Because, if you look here, I've got some shielded cable that takes the signal down here to the reverb tank. Again, I got a new, it's a two-spring uh, reverb tank. This thing is awesome, it sounds great. It's a mod tank. Flip that one if you want to see the model number. But this is shielded wire. And this shielded stuff, I got it on eBay. I don't know how well you can see it, but it has like a, an inner wire, and then it's got a, a layer of copper sheathing so you strip off the outer to expose the grounded shielding and then you strip off the inner to expose the wire so this is this is now a shielded connection previously I was using uh, I don't know where those cables went there were some RCA cables and I'm not sure if they were shielded or not but I do believe that using this shielded wire was ultimately the biggest number one thing that helped eliminate the hum from the amp so Ultimately, you know, good tank, good tubes, critical. Having a good grounding setup, good jacks, critical. But ultimately, having shielded cabling to carry your signal to your reverb tank and back is probably the biggest thing that I did to help eliminate the hum. But now with all these changes, now I admit I've lost some functionality. We can no longer plug an external speaker jack. We no longer have foot switchable reverb and tremolo. You just got to use the controls, but... I think that the benefits are worth the trade-offs just because now this amp is rock solid and it sounds like a million bucks. So let's go ahead and check out some clips.
Okay, as I've got the playing this amp, I want to do just some brief commentary on finding an amp's sweet spot. You hear that a lot with tube amps or running them up to a certain level where they like to live. I think this Princeton Reverb sounds awesome at this setting, and this is a setting I've seen with a lot of black panel type amps that's worked for me. Got a single coil guitar. Now my amp has a negative feedback switch. I've got the negative feedback engaged, which is gonna suppress gain a little bit, even out the frequency response, make it a little more hi-fi. The volume's at about six or seven, treble's at about six, mids are at four, bass is at three, reverb's at about four, and I've got the tremolo on, and it's uh, the intensity is up maybe to about middle, but the speed is pretty low. And to me, all these elements are just adding just the right amount. So, for example, if I just back the volume down a little bit and play with my fingers, I get a really nice clean tone. The reverb just gives it this nice, very gushy uh, cloud that that kind of sits on. And the tremolo, you almost kind of forget about it. If I didn't tell you it was on, you maybe wouldn't have even noticed. Just gives you a tiny little bit of movement. I think this amp is just kind of magic at this setting. Um, it's, it's loud enough that you could keep it up with a drummer. You might want to put a mic in front of it if you're playing live, but you could keep up with a drummer, no problem. But you can also play it at home. It just is a really, really cool little amp. Um, definitely I'm hearing, this one has a, a vintage Jensen style speaker, which really accentuates those buttery, clean tones. The bass kind of has that piano thing. The hop top end is sparkly and clear. The mid range is a little bit scooped. Really accentuates that. I think if you really push it, it kind of has this crispy, crackly paper sound to my ear. Um, you know, go back to the three feet, three five clip. I think you can really hear that. So to me, the this speaker with this amp screams this kind of edge of breakup slash clean. You know, you can even back the volume down to about four and just get a really pure clean tone. <laughs> That's just a really pleasant play at home, put some pedals in front of it type clean setup. And this amp is just a ton of fun. I'm really glad we got it to a point where now it's working a lot better now. Um, it just is cool. It's a cool amp. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know your thoughts down below. See you again soon. Thanks. Bye.